So today our main intention is the demo on VLSA design. Okay. So as you all from second year, third year and final year students, today we'll mainly focus on VLSA design. Okay. So what is mean by VLSA and what is the uh, manufacturing process in VLSA and what is the history of VLSA? Okay. We'll discuss all the things. So make the session as interactive. Okay. I will ask the questions. Uh, okay. So try to tell the answer. Uh, if you have any doubts, uh, you can discuss your doubts here, okay, uh, regarding the career of VLSA or uh, different domains in VLSA. So whatever the doubts you have regarding electronics, VLSA, you can ask your doubts, okay. So, yeah. So the demo on VLSA. So these are the content of the session today. So first we are going to discuss on introduction to the VLSA and what is the history of the VLSA and what is the future scope of the VLSA and what are the fabrication technologies involved in the transistor fabrication and what are the different applications of VLSA and how we manufacture a chip or we can call as a processor. Okay, what are the steps behind uh, to, uh, to manufacture a chip? And how to design a circuit using Verilog HDL. And what is the importance of digital logic design in the digital VLSA. And how to verify a design using system Verilog and UVM. And what is the difference between system Verilog and UVM. And also we are looking into the scope of VLSA industry. Okay, what is the future scope and what is the present uh, market situation. All these things we are discussing now. Okay. So feel free, ask your doubts, okay? Please raise your doubts and make the session interactive, okay? So before going to the session, can you tell me what is mean by VLSI? So whatever the knowledge you have on VLSI, so you can share some information regarding that. What is mean by VLSI? You can unmute your system, you can talk. Okay. Yeah, the um, it is basically very large scale inter inter integration. Okay. Like we are uh, fabricating the like transistors, like num number of transistors and resistors and other components into a single chip. Okay. Okay, so VLSI is nothing but the era of very large scale integrated circuit. Okay, it is nothing but a integrated circuit. You all seen in your laboratory, right? We will have the integrated circuits. Okay, uh, there will be some small IC and there will be pins, uh, sites, there will be pins. That is nothing but integrated circuit. Whatever we are seeing in our labs, those are like a small scale integration or medium scale integration where the number of transistors are integrated in less. Okay, so very large scale integration means from the small scale and medium scale and the large scale, we are moving to the very large scale. That means the number of transistors are increasing day by day. Okay, so whatever the integrating thousands of millions of transistors on a single chip, that that are in, uh, increasing day by day that's why we are calling as a very large scale okay so coming to the domains in vlsi we have different domains in the vlsi like digital vlsi system and analog vlsi system domain and mixed vlsi system domain okay we already know uh, previous uh, in olden days we uh, the all gadgets whatever the electronic uh, uh, components or uh, electronic uh, systems we are seeing all are analog based if you are uh, look into watches mostly we will use analog watches only alarm mostly we will use uh, uh, analog alarms okay so mostly the circuits are uh, analog based but nowadays the world is around digital era Okay, so whatever a single chip, whatever it is a complex or a, for a small gadget, everywhere we are using digital. Okay, why? Because digital, the you, we know the advantages of digital, 
right? Uh, you completed the analog electronics and digital electronics, right? Uh, so digital electronics means mainly the interf interference will be less, okay? Uh, so more accurate uh, in in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, the components, okay? In terms of uh, design, everything is accurate. So digital VLSA system domain is mostly uh, present. Uh, it, it is booming in the world now, present place. And mixed VLSA system domain. Mixed VLSA is nothing but both we have analog design and the digital design, both uh, analog signals and the discrete signals. Okay, by using digital signal processing techniques, we use the mixer signal processing techniques. Okay, so both will be involved in the chip. So everyone got the clarity what is mean by VLSA? VLSA is nothing but a chip. Wherever we see, okay, in our laptop, there will be a processor that is nothing but a IC. Uh, and mobile phones present, we are using SOC, system on chip. That is nothing but a VLSA chip. Okay, and the mobile phone and even small, very small gadgets, like wherever the children playing some video games, Okay, auto, uh, automatic car controller. Even there also, there will be small chip. And even your ATM card. If you see the ATM card, when you are inserting the ATM card, you will find small chip indication. Okay, so the chip is nothing but the VLSI chip, which have the billions of transistors inside it. Okay, so how we integrate billion number of transistors inside it? You have seen in your laboratory how the transistor will look like the BJT mostly and the FET, MOSFET, right? So will we integrate those transistors in the chip? Is that true? No, actually no. So whatever we are using the transistor, if you go to the manufacturing process unit, those, the CMOS design will be, uh, um, the CMOS design will be converted into the layers okay we have the stick diagrams if you aware with or not i don't know uh the, it, they will be converted into the stick diagram which is nanometer okay in size of nanometer so we'll discuss all the things okay so that is overall vlsa everyone understood yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so if you have any doubts, please uh, raise your doubts uh, so that we can discuss, okay? So coming to the history of VLSA, can you tell me what is the first computer uh, our engineers have designed? What is the first computer? What is the technology we have used in the first computer? What is the fabrication technology has used in the first computer? Or if you see uh, some TV in your, um, uh, like uh, in your grandparent homes or you will find some olden TVs, right? Or old t uh, TVs, television. So can you tell me what type of technology we have used inside that television is nothing but the computer? I have no idea. Okay, so if you see uh, in your old, like uh, when you are childhood, uh, the the TV will be like uh, a vacuum tube. Uh, the, uh, we have used a box size TVs will be there, right? Uh, 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 so in that we have used the vacuum tube technology, okay, which is a, uh, by using the vacuum tube technology, uh, we can pick, uh, we can get those uh, picture everything. Okay, so that 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 is what technology we have used that time. From the vacuum tube technology, we have moved to the uh, diode trans uh, di uh, diode families. From the diodes, we moved to the transistor family. In the transistor, also we have different type of transistor, like analog transistors, like a BJT. We have used those uh, in the BJT family, and from the BJT, we have moved to the FET MOSFET. Present, we are using CMOS FET, uh, PIN FET, GA FET, these technologies. So, whenever we are moving to the newer technology, so what are the advantages of getting in, inside the chip? What are the advantages getting inside the chip? Can you compare the golden days computer, which is a first computer? Can you compare with this computer and the motherboard, which we have seen before 10 years? 
this motherboard is before 10 years whatever we have seen in our computer in cpu box there will be separate cpu box and uh, there will be motherboard right and what is the present technology we are using in our, in our mac or uh, whatever the uh, laptops or mobile phones so what type of mother motherboard we are seeing is the motherboard from the motherboard we have moved to the soc system on chip okay soc in your mobile phone if you see there is a very smart design okay um so that is nothing but system on chip okay so whenever the fabrication technology is improving day by day the speed is going to in increase and the devices can able to do the multiple task okay multitasking and uh, mainly uh, we can uh, the size of the chip is reducing okay uh, the size of this uh, chip is reducing and we are using very smart mobile phones and smart laptops okay if you see the size so these are the main advantages mainly speed power battery and uh, uh, the size these are the main advantages of the processor advancements is it right or not Yes, ma'am. If you see here, yeah. this is the processor, whatever we have used 10 years back. Okay, so uh, here we have used the cooling, uh, for cooling process, we have used separate fans for the processor. But nowadays, are we using any cooling fans to our processor in our laptops? And if you see, these are the ports for the memory. Okay, to insert the RAM cards. Separately, we will insert the memory cards there. But nowadays, are we inserting any memory cards in our laptop separately? And if you see here, these are the PCIe. Okay, PCIe is nothing but one of the protocol we use for the communication between high-level components within the motherboard. Okay, so and if you see the different ports, okay, USB port, your port, these type of ports, how big size we are using but nowadays are we using the, those type of uh, ports inside our laptops or the computers no so all these things are changing because of the fabrication technology okay because of why fabrication technologies i will i will tell you that thing okay so did you understood up to here everyone yes ma'am okay okay So, have any doubts? No. Okay. Um, so, what? Yes, then. Any doubts? Okay. So, what is mean by Murla? What is mean by Murla? Ma'am, basically the number of transistors in IC would double every two years, which would increase the speed and capability of a computer. Okay. And this growth is like exponential that you have shown in a graph. Okay. So, what is the advantage of that? If number of transistors are double for every two years or approximately 18 months, and the size of the transistor is reducing by half, so what is the advantage with that? And basically, we are getting the more computing power, higher efficiency, more complex functions, and all the things on the small chips. At like we are working on nano, mm. nano chip. Okay. So yeah. So mainly, whenever the number of transistors are doubling for every two uh, two years okay so the switching operation will be increased double so if switching operation is double automatically the speed will be increased okay so the power whatever the power uh, charging will be reduced okay and uh, and also whenever the size of the transistor is reducing by half we can integrate more number of transistors right so that the size of the chip also going to be reduced 
okay so if you see in 19 uh, in 1900 if you are uh, 1900 that time when the transistor uh, like uh, we are integrating thousand number of transistors okay in 1900s or 2000 number of transistor or lakhs of transistor but in 2000 in 2020 we are integrating billion number of transistors so whenever in 1900 the number of transistors are thousand so the size of the transistor will be this much okay in 2000 whenever we are integrating crore number of transistor million number of transistor the transistor size will be very small like this so we can integrate million number of transistors in a single chip whenever the uh, in 2020 okay so here we are using billion number of transistors so this is the size of the transistor so we can integrate billion number of transistors inside the chip okay so that we can improve the uh, quality of the chip okay in more features okay so my question is how we can tell like what is mean by size of the transistor mostly present days we are using the cmos transistor okay not cmos uh, some other advanced technologies are there but how can we measure a size of the transistor suppose a cmos have the size like source drain and can you tell what are the okay can you tell other one what are the terminals we have perfect transistor Gate. Yeah. So, source, drain, gate and the channel. Okay. So, how we can tell the size of the transistor? If size of the transistor is reducing, what, what does it mean? How the current flow happens in the transistor? How the current flow happens in the transistor? So the current flow is always from source to drain. Okay. And this is the width of the channel. Okay. So, the size of the transistor, whatever we are telling, it's a 100 nanometer or uh, some micrometer. The size of the transistor is nothing but the distance between source and the drain. This is nothing but size of the transistor. Okay. Size of the transistor means not overall uh, transistor, not the size of overall transistor. It is just the distance between source and the drain. Okay, so when I am telling uh, the size is reducing, okay, uh, it, uh, for every two years, the transistor is becoming half. Okay, if it is 100 nanometer in, nine, in 2000, uh, by 2002, it is a 50 nanometer, by 2004, it is a 25 nanometer, like that every two years, the size is becoming half. Okay, so can you tell me what is the present size of the transistor we are using? Uh, using in our chips present chips whatever mobile phones you are using whatever laptops you are using in that processor what is the size of the transistor we are using can you repeat okay so in laptop there is a processor right uh, so in laptop or mobile phone there is a processor maybe it is some SOC or whatever it have some n number of cores and all so here we will use everything in terms of transistor we are integrated in terms of transistor so what will be the size of the transistor like size of the transistor means suppose here if you see the Moore law if you see the Moore law uh, 
uh, I have drawn some diagram previously, right? Uh, so in 1990, if a thousand number of transistor, a thousand number of transistor means the size is like this. And after the size is like this. Now the size is like this. So what will, what would be the size here? So here it may be in micrometer, maybe here in nanometer. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what is the size, exact size? Ma'am, uh, around, uh, we are in uh, Intel that the mass production is going on. It's around 14 nanometer across. Okay. And right now that Apple launched uh, their new iPhone 15 that is of 3 nanometer technology. Okay. Using. Okay. So iPhone using iPhone 15 uh came okay, right so iphone 15 using 3 nanometer so in the laptops whatever amd is using 5 nanometer in the laptop processors okay ryzen processor so this is the fabrication technology we are using okay so the transistor size is reducing so that we can integrate more number of transistor okay as you told that the size of the transistor is uh, 3 nanometer or uh, 5 nanometer. Okay, that's good. So, if size of the transistor is 3 nanometer, mean but the, that will be minimum size, very minimum size between the source and the drain. Just this much of size. Even we can't see the size. Okay, micrometers only we can't see. So, nanometer, it, it's not uh, right. So, how uh, if transistor reduces to 1 nanometer, Will it do the switching operation? Here, transistor is working based on the switching, like on, off, on, off, on, off. That is the uh, output of transistor based on the switching operation. So if transistor reduces to one nanometer, then the will transistor work switching operation? Will it perform? Or in zero nanometer? Because next 10 to 15 years or next 20 years, we are moving to 1 or 0 nanometer. So that time will VLSI debt because present VLSI is moving around the transistor only. Okay, present nowadays, it is a semiconductor material which is uh, uh, for manufacturing the transistor. We are using the silicon semi uh, semiconductor material. So overall VLSI is running to uh, around the transistor. So if transistor reduces to one nanometer, then VL will VLSI debt by that time? You know, uh, it's not possible because uh, if uh, the transistor size goes to zero nanometer, as you can say, that uh, we will go to below nanometer technology that we are using. Because uh, if we, you are saying that at zero VLSI you are dead, dead, then it's you know, how it's possible that any processor can run. Okay. Main so okay then what will be the next uh, technology like after nanometer uh, then which type of transistor may, may use maybe it, it will be uh, others what about others can you answer are you able to catch up Are you trying to understand what is mean by VLSI? I'm just trying to know what are the things, uh, the basic things we need to know, right? What is mean by VLSI and how the history, what is mean by transistor and all. So mainly the, the this class is intended for that, okay? So yeah, okay, maybe you don't have the idea on that, okay? So get, uh, just uh, go through that what is mean by transistor and what is the size of the transistor how we calculate okay so um if transistor move to one nanometer then what is the next technology maybe okay so picometer picometer okay so already it's a nanometer nanometer means it's already very small thing okay in terms of picometer will the electron move from source to drain can we uh, can we predict the number of electrons? Can we predict the current in the picometer? Is it possible? Will the transistor work switching operation? Because be before before knowing that, just uh, uh, just see here one thing. In the CMOS, uh, this is the planar fit. Okay, this is what the transistor, different transistors we are using in the manufacturing. Okay, so planar fit is nothing but the CMOS. 
you have different type of fat right mosfet cmos complementary metal oxide semiconductor so in the cmos we have source drain and the gate okay so this is a horizontal with the source and the drain uh, the gate will be horizontal with the source and the drain so whenever the transistor is moving uh, forward like 100 nanometer 50 nanometer the distance between the source and the drain is reducing 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 so after some certain point okay once the transistor moving to the 24 nanometer this cmos transistor not able to uh, do the switching operation because very very minimum size between the source and the drain so the channel width is very minimum so whatever the electrons are moving flowing from source to the drain they are uh, uh, tunneling into the gate okay so there will be some short circuit effects may be occur okay current leakage will be occur so at the 4 nanometer transistor only we are not using the cmos transistor okay so to avoid that uh, gate tunneling of electrons and to avoid the current uh, leakage we are moving to the finfet finfet is nothing but some advanced technology just made some modification with the cmos okay just uh, here if you see this is what the advancement has brought up in the finfet just one gate is tunneling into the uh, like fin uh, the structure is like a fin manner okay so that is somewhat advanced structure to avoid the current leakage so at 24 nanometer only we got the current leakage just to avoid that leakage we we got some advanced uh, we just modified that like a fin okay so here the fin is working up to 40 nanometer up to 14 nanometer only we can able to use the fin fit transistor from that onwards again current leakage gate tunneling is happened okay so short circuit effects will be coming so after again from the fin fit we move to the gaffet gaffet is nothing but nano wire if you see how here we have taken here and the nano wires how we have modified so the nano gaffet is nothing but up to 7 nanometer okay up to 7 nanometer only uh, it is working perfectly like without any current leakage okay without any short circuit effect between the source and the drain we are able to do the perfect switching operation at 7 nanometer up uh, up to 7 for ga uh, gaffet okay gate all around and from after gaffet we move to mbc fet mbc fet means 5 nanometer 3 nanometer 5 not 3 5 nanometer so here we have used the nano sheet after 5 nanometer again we are facing the short circuit effect gate tunneling effect all the effects all all the problems we are facing here okay so transistor not able to perform the switching operation perfectly if it is not uh, doing perfectly that thing if short circuit effect occur entire circuit will be collapsed right uh, so uh, my question is already in the nanometer the these technologies we are using we are not able to uh, get uh, like uh, we we not able to go for next pico okay so then what will be the between source and the drain is very minimum if one nanometer so then what will be the future of the vlsa Any answers? Any idea? I have no idea. Okay. So here, uh, I just go through. Just I'm. I won't. I'm not telling the overall thing. I just give some information regarding that. Uh, just you go. Uh, just do research on that. Why it is uh, happening and um, what are the technology? What is the future of VLSA? and how the artificial intelligence is going to collaborate with the VLSI. So just go through and do some research so you will get, get to understand. Okay, so we'll discuss this thing in the next session. Okay, this is 40 minutes limit. Okay, can you please join quickly with using same link again? Using same link, please join quickly. Okay. Okay. Using same link, please join quickly.
Okay, so what will be the next future if source and the drain is between 1 nanometer or 0 nanometer? Okay, so when we are moving to very few number of electrons, okay, the size is reducing means the current flow will be very small. We can predict the number of electrons, right? Uh, so if you go to atomic level, so what is the atomic level? What is by atom? How electrons are moving around the atom? Okay, so in the atomic level, in the atomic level, we are able, we are trying to get some advanced uh, technology called Hello, am I audible? In the quantum level, okay. So in the VLSA, the coming technology, okay, in the future, maybe in 20 years, okay, present uh, some of the companies like IBM and uh, Intel are going to uh, do on the research on this uh, project, okay. That is nothing but quantum technology. Okay, quantum technology means here, everything is on atomic level. Okay, you know the artificial intelligence, uh, how we are uh, uh, working uh, using artificial intelligence. There is no physical chip. Okay, so by using the quantum mechanics, okay, quantum theory, we are uh, we are developing every circuit, right? Uh, so in the future, I can tell that in the future, the VLSI is collaborating with the AI artificial intelligence. By uh, so in that case, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, there will be a lot of advancements are going to there. Okay, so like uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, camera, okay, uh, how we can do, uh, how we can utilize the uh, camera or uh, by using the deep learning and machine learning. Uh, there are a lot of advancements out there. Okay, so just do research on these things. Okay, as you are student level, uh, this is enough for today. So otherwise I can go deeply on what is meant by quantum technology and what are the different, technolo different uh, technologies like quantum entanglement or superposition. So if I tell that these things now, maybe you can't understand. Okay, just go through the uh, some of the Google materials. Okay, what happens if a uh, transistor reduces to one nanometer and what is meant by quantum technology and what is the future of VLSI. Okay, so that uh, you can be able to understand uh, that what is the future. Okay, so everyone got the point up to here. Everyone got the point up to here. Everyone yes, Miss Water. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, yes ma but, but now, I have a question, ma'am. Yes, yes, please. Yes, uh, why are the transistors getting smaller? Why exactly do the transistors have to get smaller? Why because if we, we know that, yeah, we, we know that eventually if they get too small, they're not going to work. Why exactly do they have to get smaller? Uh, why? Because, uh, see, when the uh, see, when the transistor is becoming smaller, then only we can integrate my billion number of transistors, right? Suppose uh, if the transistor is size is in a micrometer, like a thousand micrometer, okay, uh, same transistor, okay. whenever the uh, here, if we are using micrometer transistor, maybe we are integrating one lakh number of transistors in a chip. Same hundred, uh, same thousand micrometer transistor you are integrating in terms of billions on a chip, then how much size the chip will be? smaller, right? It's not smaller, right? Okay. Like if 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 uh, we make them smaller, mm -hmm. then the the chip will, uh, will be will be smaller, right? We make the transistor smaller. So when we are making the transistor and this size of transistor and like this size, this size of transistor, there is a huge difference, right? 
Yeah, yeah, it is a huge difference. I see that, yeah. So that uh, we are able to reduce the size of overall chip. When we are reducing the size of the transistor, overall chip size also will be reduced. Okay, yeah. The, the chip will be much smaller. The yes. chip will yes. be smaller and uh, it will accommodate a lot of transistors. Mm. All right, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So if you see golden days, uh, the digital circuit, whatever the digital circuit we have used, that is very small. Like we we are not uh, able to add a lot of features. Okay. The features will be less. So the number of blocks also less. But nowadays, the complex circuits are coming. We are daily, regularly, we are increasing number of blocks on a S4C. Okay. Like uh, different teams are involving in terms of debug, okay, in terms of verification or in terms of uh, uh, control uh, unit or in terms of uh, data bus, everything, everything uh, uh, blocks are increasing day by day on the chip uh, based on the feature. So that, so that the complexity is increasing, the design complexity is increasing. And uh, so, uh, so that is the main reason. All right. Okay, you got the point now. Yeah, yeah. So if the design is increasing, increasing rapidly, we cannot be stable in the thousand micrometer only. If we are stable in thousand micrometer, if the chip of the size is this in nineteen ninety, now the chip size will be this. Okay, so that's why we are reducing the size of the transistor day by day. All right. Yeah. Okay, so any other doubts, others? Okay, so what are the applications of VLSA? Nowadays, everywhere, everywhere from small kid, okay, to 60 years old man, everywhere using some, any digital gadget, okay? So everywhere we are using the digital gadgets. Okay, like mobile phone or televisions or laptops or ATMs or elevators or vending machines. Okay, in present India, we don't have vending machines, but in foreign countries, we have the vending machines, uh, like any washing machine or woven or whatever. Whatever we are using, the digital uh, circuit. Okay, inside there will be a digital chip. Okay, so in terms of computers, in terms of communication networks, like a router, LAN, Okay, so uh, in router also there will be a chip. Without chip, chip is nothing but the hardware. Without the ho without hardware, no network will work, right? Uh, so if if it want to perform some uh, network, okay, using some protocol, uh, it should have some hardware, right? That hardware is nothing but the chip uh, which is connected with some memories in terms of computer, okay? And some electronics, some commercial electronics, some commercial gadgets okay and automobile industry in automobile industry whatever the car present how the car advanced features are getting okay in future driverless car or whatever so many advantages are getting nowadays right uh, so that all nothing but based on the vlsa chips only okay because of vlsa chips because multitasking are able to do with the chips okay so next medicine Nowadays, medicine equipment, if you see the medicine equipment, the laser treatment or uh, uh, whatever, uh, every every doctor, okay, not only one specialist, every specialist have the great equipment. Those all because of good internal hardware, okay, and military purpose, okay. Uh, so whatever they are using some, uh, some whatever the military purpose, uh, so those are related to the VLSA. Okay, so everything are dependent on the electronics, VLSA chips. Everyone understood here? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma'am, I had one question. Yes. Ma'am, you said that uh, the distance between source and drain uh, it determines the size of the transistor. Mm. Yes. So how do you decrease that, that distance? Um... How can we decrease the distance? Means, uh, it, it, see, in the manufacturing time, uh, 
see in the manufacturing time only we will decrease the size of the transistor overall size of the transistor overall size of this transistor means internal source to drain also will be decreased that will be uh, from see the size of the if if you see the circuit here directly we are not taking the circuit this uh, this this finfet or uh, cmosfet will be converted into the stick diagram you know the stick diagram right how we draw source and the drain and uh, here we have uh, a body and here we'll connect some uh, transistors okay so around that okay in the stick diagram when we are doing manufacturing from present uh, transistor to the next process uh, next uh, uh, processor at the manufacturing time only they will reduce the size okay 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 yes and after applications of VLSI, uh, how the manufacturing process, because we are telling our chip, like whatever we are using the hardware chip. So exactly what are the steps we are following to manufacture a IC. Okay. So these are the steps we will follow to manufacture the IC. First, we'll get the design idea. First step is design idea. Okay, before going to that, in VLSI, we will have two fields, front-end design verification and back-end hardware manufacturing process. Okay, front-end is the design verification. So, what is mean by design verification? So, design is nothing but, first of all, suppose there is a Mac or uh, some Apple, uh, okay, so, uh, Apple 14 Pro or Apple, Apple 14 Pro Max is there and Apple 15 is there. What is the difference between Apple 14 and Apple 15? What are the, uh, what are the uh, limitations of uh, Apple 14 and what are the features are not uh, boom in the market? Okay. I mean, what are the features are not able to click on the market so they can remove that feature and they can add some extra feature, right? So that is nothing but design idea. So present what is the design according to the project maybe it is not regarding apple and it may be some uh, some small project like any router or any small like if you see uh, your la laptop have some intel processor right like uh, seventh generation eighth generation fifth generation so what are the generations generations are nothing but just improving some few uh, features okay whatever uh, whatever uh, not influenced in the market they just remove that and whatever a good feature are there okay without according to the market requirement they will add that feature okay so according to the previous project they will bring up some features okay but any project they won't do from the scratch whatever previous project is there from the design idea they will add some extra features and they will design accordingly okay so that is the design idea okay so if if a processor is manufacturing means in the a thousands of engineers involvement will be there okay thousands of engineers team leaders will be there okay under the under them uh, every block will be developed okay so first they will take the design idea according to the project specification so after design idea suppose this is the design in the design there will be several number of blocks will be there thousand number of blocks will be there okay so each block will be given to each team okay so there will be separate separate teams will be there for memory one team for core one team okay for graphic processor one team will be there uh, for uh, uh, ip level uh, uh, design some teams will be there so there will be uh, different teams will be there they will assign each team each block so uh, they will handle that uh, the team will be handle the particular block and they will develop from uh, scratch to everything okay so after design idea uh, they will take the behavioral description behavioral description means what is the intention of the particular block and what are we need to do in that particular block first uh, th that is the behavioral description nothing but what are the inputs and what are the outputs what are the internal signals what is the functionality 
Next, next thing is the writing Verilog code, data path and logic design. They will write the Verilog code, Verilog or VHDL. These two are hardware description languages. Okay, uh, we cannot write using C language or C++ um, uh, assembly language like that. Okay, we have separate hardware description language uh, separately to write for digital circuits and analog circuits, which are Verilog and VHDL. So by using Verilog or VHDL, we will design the particular circuit using the program. I will show you how to write the program also. Okay. And after designing using the circuit, they will generate some schematic netlist circuit in terms of gates. Okay. Like this, if you see, they will generate some schematic in terms of gates. So every gate need to convert into the CMOS level transistor level because we are not integrating uh, this, uh, the design in terms of gate, right? Everything we are integrating in terms of transistor only. So every gate must be converted into transistor. But as an engineer, we won't do that. Uh, the tools are there because the, nowadays the designs are very complex, okay? So by using code or by using techniques, we won't do that. Uh, there will be internal tool will be there. So automatically the tool will convert the uh, gate level to CMOS level. From the CMOS, uh, the netlist will be converted like that. Okay. So before converting to the CMOS, we need to verify the design is working correctly or not. Before before verifying, we cannot, we cannot move to the next process. Why? Because we don't know whether the output is getting correct or not. Without checking the output, how can we move for the next process correct, right? So for verifying this design, these are the very complex designs. If you see here, for, ver uh, for verifying these complex designs, we are using system verilog and UVM methodology. System verilog is the verification language and UVM is the methodology. It is a standard methodology which is taken from the system verilog and the object-oriented programming, okay? Uh, so UVM is the methodology which have the standard library and system verilog is the language. These two are the verification uh, languages, okay? By using that, we will verify. Once verification is confirmed, that means once the output is getting correctly according to the inputs, next we'll move to the further process called backend physical design. What happens in the physical design? May, may, mainly fabrication okay fabrication means they will take the silicon wafer mainly we will integrate the circuit on the silicon okay so there will be silicon wafer like this there will be so many techniques involved in that okay uh, this is not as simple as possible uh, there will be a lot of teams involved in the physical design like a DFT team or a, a layout team or fabrication team testing team validation there will be uh, more teams will be there. Okay, so each team has separate task. So they will do routing, placement and routing. After placement and routing, the chip, the design, whatever this design is there, this de design will be converted into the CMOS netlist, right? I will share you one video. Just you can go through that video, how actual manufacturing from the sand, semiconductor material, silicon is coming from the sand, right? After heating some, at some temperature so from the sand how we are getting the silicon material from the silicon how we are uh, making these wafers in that wafers how we are doing the placement and routing okay after fitting uh, fitting everything how uh, the actual pro actual uh, uh, ic will be developed okay everything uh, you can see in the video uh, available in the youtube also intel manufacturing uh, videos okay so this is the manufacturing process okay mainly design verification team physical team physical design so these are the main internally we have subdomains okay so everyone understood have any doubts no ma'am yes everyone understood Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what is the importance of digital electronics? So as we are in, uh, learning the digital VLSI domain than analog, because present world, 
is around the digital only, right? Uh, analog has the less importance than digital. So what is the importance of digital electronics? As you are second year BTEC or some uh, BTEC and uh, masters, you are doing, you, are, you already know the digital electronics, right? Uh, so what is mean by gates and what is mean by combinational logic circuits, different sequential logic circuits or finer state mission and memories. Okay, so can you tell me the quickly these answers, how how can we implement a NOT gate and a buffer using the XOR and X NOT? How to implement a four by one multiplexer using AND or XOR or whatever the gates, universal gates and basic gates. How can we implement a multiplexer using those gates? So how the decoder will work as a demultiplexer or how the demultiplexer work as a decoder? And why race around condition occurs in latches? And how many clock cycles required to get the output for four bit serial input, serial output or serial input parallel output or parallel in parallel out or parallel in serial out? So how many clock cycles are required to get the output, whether it is a four bit size or three bit size based upon the number of bits, number of flip flops, whether it is a serial or parallel, we will get that information, right? So did you have any idea? Okay, can you explain? for which question uh, how many clock cycles required yes. to get the output for four bit okay uh, difference between synchronous and asynchronous reset and uh, which type of flip flops use it for registers and counters can you tell me which type of flip flop is used for register and which for counter and why Which type of flip-flop is to model the flip-flop? Yes. Which type of flip-flop use it to model registers and counters? And what is the difference between melee and more final state mission? Which type of final state mission is preferred mostly? Whether more or melee. Um, Mm, yes. Ma'am, for this of I am saying that it's PC subject we are using for resistance and counter as they are commonly used as the for synchronization. And the sorry. We didn't understood your answer. Which type of flip flop user for modeling registers, either serial in, serial out, or parallel in, parallel out, or um, whatever the register? So, how many bits will store by flip flop, and how how many how many bits will be stored by register? I mean, in register we store eight bits. Eight bits only eight. Why? In flip flop, how many bits we will store? Um, one flip flop, one bit. Okay, then register why only eight bits? Okay. Um. What is the what is the disadvantage with the melee, and what are the advantages of more? Okay, so you need to learn these type of things. Okay, so digital electronics is very important in the VLSI domain. Okay, when you are moving to the um, uh, any job, if you are looking for the job opportunity, or if you want to design any circuit 
first you need to understand different gates and different uh, like uh, the functionality of combinational logic circuits and the sequential okay so if you see uh, the register register will be n bit type okay so n bit uh, nothing but uh, there will be 4 bit register 8 bit register 16 bit 32 bit according to our requirement we can use any size okay for registers we use the d flip flop because D flip flop is for memory, right? Uh, it stored the data. Whereas counter is nothing but counting the number of clock cycles. So T flip flop toggle is used for counting number of clock cycles. So that is like uh, if you see how many clock cycles are required to get the output for serial in serial out. So, so serial transmission is nothing but transmitting the data one by one bit. One by one bit means for each clock cycle, it can shift only one bit. Whereas parallel, parallel means all the bit, whether it is a 8 bit or 32 bit, whatever, all the data will be shifted or upload, uh, updated at a time. So only one clock cycle required for parallel. Okay. So here four bit means four, um, four bit for four clock cycles for shifting and to get the output, uh, First output, the first bit will be updated in the fifth clock cycle or end of four, uh, fourth clock cycle. So that will be based on the parallel and the serial. Okay. Like the difference between Mille and Moore. Yeah, Moore is the best. Why? Because Mille, we have some of the disadvantages. Like uh, in the uh, in the Mille, we will get uh, the output, uh, will get some glitches. So so try to understand why we get the glitches at the uh, melee output side of the melee and why glitches will be not getting for the more why because the melee will get asynchronous input how it is getting the asynchronous input just try to get uh, get that point okay so uh, implementation of the 4 by 1 multiplexer yeah we can implement using gates Okay, so just go through these type of questions. These type of questions are important uh, for the interview purpose. Okay, so what is the importance of digital electronics? I already told you. So every every circuit in the VLSA, whatever we are designing in the SOC level, in the IP level, or in the FPGS or ASIC VLSA chips, everything is the digital based. If you see the router, you know the router, right? In the computers, uh, using the router, we will connect all the computers, okay, by using TCP IP protocol. So, this is the internal design of the router. So, what is there in the router? There is a one final state mission, one register, for, uh, FIFO, fine, uh, first in, first out, that is a memory, okay. So, by combining these different blocks in the router, these blocks are there. Uh, if you take some other, uh, some other uh, circuit, any digital, uh, digital watch. In the digital watch, we have the finer state mission. We have the counters to count the clock cycle. Okay. So, based upon these small, small circuits, we are going to build a project. Okay. So, digital electronics is very important. You need to learn uh, before getting into the VLSI. Okay. And that too, these type of tricky questions you need to learn. Okay. So that's how the digital electronics will help. Okay. So if you see the router architecture here, there is a finite state mission register FIFOs. So how we will write the Verilog programming for these? So how we will design these hardware using the program? So we'll see that thing now. How to design a circuit using Verilog HDL? And how we will design, uh, how we will verify that design using the system verilog and UVM. I just give a brief explanation on that. Okay. So if you see the program here, uh, if you see the design here, in the design, we are included all sub modules. Sub modules are nothing but uh, if you see, uh, there are uh, sub modules like final state mission, register, fee force, these are the sub modules. Okay. So Final state mission, we have written the program here, FSM. So this is the FSM. Okay, according to our specification, this is the FSM. Don't think this is very big and we can't learn the very log. This is very tough. VLSI is very tough. Don't think. Everything we will learn from basic. Everything we will learn from basic. If you see the circuit here, in this circuit, there are so many sub blocks. But 
from the basic we'll learn first what is mean by adder what is mean by subtractor what is mean by multiplexer demultiplexer like flip flop by using the flip flop how can we design the register okay then by using the register how can we design a complex circuit like fsm and how can we design a fifo before fifo we will design a ram rom some dram then we'll move to the fifo so don't think like the vlsi is very complex uh, we can't okay you you can do okay so this is somewhat i'm showing which is in a complex manner but you can learn everything from the basic okay everything from basic adder okay so yeah this this is how we will write the verilog program okay for uh, router separately register for synchronizer and for fifo like that we'll write everything uh, uh, sub module and we will connect overall circuit so that if you execute this program you will get the circuit okay so like that this is the design after the design i told you we need to verify we, without doing the verification we cannot move to the next process we cannot move to the physical design so how we will verify i i just taken small example just to show uh, see this is the multiplexer what is mean by multiplexer Uh, multiple inputs, single output. Multiple inputs, single output. Okay. What is the use of that multiple inputs and single output? Not multiple inputs, multiple single output. You need to tell n number of selection lines to power n number of inputs. And, and the input one output. On the okay. Line. So this is the multiplexer mainly used for communication purpose. Okay, based upon the selection lines, the input data will be sent to the output. The particular data input will be sent to the output. So these multiplexer, you can write different styles in Verilog. But you, there are different models like a behavioral model, a data flow model, and the gate level model, transistor level. Like this, you can write many ways. Okay, so once you try uh, trying to learn, you will get all those things, how to write the Verilog program and all. So here we have written a simple method using the array model. You already know array model. I think you already done C language, right? So how we are doing here, this is the select. What is the select? Based upon the select line only, we are transmitting the input data, right? If selection line is zero, Whatever the data is there in particular zeroth location, that data will be sent to the output. If selection line is one, whatever the data is there, data of one, that means data of one means in that particular location, whatever data is there, we will send to the output. So this is how we can write in a single line. These are the main advantages, uh, uh, sorry, not advantages. These are the tricks you need to learn by learning Verilog or system Verilog or digital electronics, whatever. Okay, uh, normally same code you will write in 10 lines, 15 lines using behavioral, using if else condition or using case condition or using gate level condition. Like that also we can write, but this is the some tricky way how we will write. Okay, and for verifying this design, we are writing a simple test bench in Verilog. This is the simple test bench in the Verilog. Can you please join for the next session quickly? We'll end the session in 15 minutes. Please everyone join. Okay, we'll discuss few important topics on system Verilog. Uh, we'll close the session in 15 minutes. Please join again. Anyone, do you have doubts anywhere? No, ma'am. Okay. See here, uh, so this is the design, very simple design we are taking, a two by one multiplexer. Okay, so for this design, how we are writing a simple multiplexer, uh, sorry, simple test bench. Test bench is nothing but to verify the design, we are applying some input stimulus. Okay, by applying the input stimulus from the test bench, we will, it the design will generate the output. The design will generate the output. That output can be seen in the console. How we can see that output based upon the uh, some 
uh, like in C language, we have the printf to return the output, right? So like that here in Verilog, we have some system tasks like dollar monitor, dollar display, uh, dollar strobe, dollar write. So by using those, we can check the output. We can write the input and output on the console. Okay. So that is the main test bench. Okay. Just to verify the design, we'll apply the input stimulus through the test bench okay so for that we are taking some simple module and we are taking what are the inputs and outputs and whatever the design is there here the design example we need to connect with our test bench otherwise this test bench doesn't understand which design need to uh, verify so that's why we are writing the dut design under test okay and here we are applying the inputs to the design so what are the inputs data is equal to 1010 some selection lines uh, selection line 00 01 10 11 so based upon the selection lines we are applying the input and able to check the output okay see now this is some eda playground tool which is used to for mainly for design for uh, very log and vhdl okay see so how the output is generating basically in your laboratories you will check the practical calculations with the theoretical calculations right uh, so like that here also we are checking the practical values theoretical values we can generate because of because we are using simple value right uh, we can generate here but if you go to system where log or ubm automatically internal code will write some golden reference logic so we can check we can check where uh, original output expected output to the uh, original output okay so if you see here we have given data equal to 1010 zero, one, zero. so selection line is a 00, zero. if selection line is 00 zero, zero, output should be whatever the data of 0 is there that output should get so 0 if selection line is 0 1 so whatever 1 is there here that 1 will be getting at the output if selection line is 10 second location one one third location because we have mentioned here data is a three down to zero one down to zero three down to zero means the locations will be three two one zero like that we will calculate you can also give zero up to three zero up to three then what will be the locations zero one two three so if selection line is zero then this last bit will get if selection line is one then this two this three this like that based upon indication okay so this is how we can verify the uh, design using the very lock did everyone understood yes, i am creating the schematic because i don't have the schematic tool uh, in my laptop so I'm not showing the schematic. If you if you want to see the schematic, same router program. If you if you uh, use in the simulate uh, synthesis tool, synthesis tool, synthesis is nothing but from the Verilog program. If you generate the RTL, uh, the register transfer level, uh, this is nothing but RTL netlist or schematic. We can call anything. Okay, so by using synthesis tool, we can generate like this. Okay, so this is how we can verify a design using the very log but how, why we are moving to the system where log instead of very log why we are moving to the system where log or uvm because see here simple design means we can able to write the using the very log okay but for simple design we are giving inputs five number of times okay one time for data and four selection lines for two bit if it is three bit, we need to write eight combinations. We need to give eight number of times. And if it is a 16, uh, uh, four bit, 16 number of combination. There is a simple logic also, but 16 number of uh, inputs we need to give. So that is the one problem. But in the system log, we can do directly randomization. In log also we have randomization, but that doesn't work effectively. In system log we have randomization. We can able to control the randomization using the constraint. Okay, so lot of advantages are there. There we will use the OOPS concepts. OOPS concepts means 
it's a glass class based verification everything dynamic in nature so that is the main advantage okay and interfacing with the dut that is main advantage and coverage and all. so many advantages are there at this point of time you may not understand that's why i'm not uh, telling everything so so many features are there using the system verlog that's why we are moving to the system verlog but why we are moving to the uvm again instead of system verlog means if you want to develop any design you need to uh, develop everything from the scratch using the system verlog but by using the uvm we no need to develop everything from the scratch okay we have some predefined libraries in the uvm so if you see this code uh, so don't don't try to okay uh, so if you see here everything will be libraries okay so everything will be libraries in the uvm so by using the uvm we can write the code very simply okay so if uh, if you want to do any ver design verification suppose uh, here there is a router okay if you want to do verification of this router using the verilog it may take nearly nearly 3 months or nearly more than 3 months also okay using the verilog but if you use system verilog it will take only 2 months for doing verification but if you use uvm within 1 month we can do the verification of the router so that is the advantage okay did you got the point now why we are using a uvm system verilog for verification everyone got yes ma'am okay yes, so what, yes uh, do you have any doubts no okay so i think uh, you don't have any doubts and coming to the next slide so th uh, this is how we will uh, how to design a circuit using verilog hdl and how we will verify and what is the difference between sv and uvm once you move to the course everything you will learn from the scratch you can implement many projects using verilog sv like that okay so next what is the scope of vlsi industry what is the market nowadays so vlsi has good career that is the best career opportunity compared to the software okay so because um, mm. uh, the stress will be less because whatever the work we have we can do the work and we can close okay so according to the level uh, they will provide the work and we can do the work and salary is also very good in the vlsi okay there are good product based companies like synopsis amd uh, intel samsung and mentor graphics so many nvidia so many companies are there and product not only product based service based are also there so the salaries will be good okay if you have good knowledge you will get great salaries okay but in vlsa at starting it will be less only for freshers but if you have two year experience or three year experience from three plus the salaries will be double you will get 100% 200% hikes okay that is the uh, vlsa so coming to the demand demand is also very high for vlsa present market is somewhat low okay in it also the market is low vls also market low but next coming two months uh, next coming two months near lakhs of uh, jobs are going to uh, release okay so and uh, vlsa never dead vlsa is going to collaborate with ai uh, it, it is getting some new technologies with a quantum mechanism okay quantum computing so vlsa has a great future in next 20 30 years also i can strongly believe that so if you are if you are interested in the core don't take next step vlsa is the better opportunity okay uh, just focus what you want to learn whether front end design verification or back end physical design okay back end physical design is somewhat um, uh, less opportunities for the freshers okay so um, if you are very interested you can go but less opportunities for the freshers that also good in terms of salary everything good but back end means everything manufacturing right so uh, the product based companies will hire more mostly experienced candidates who have 6 years 10 year experience means that will be good okay so 
yeah um so do you have any doubts no ma'am no, ma no everyone clear yes ma'am okay so how many of you interested towards core no one mm. they are raising hand amrit muskan yeah so software means if you have very good knowledge in uh, coding okay Uh, if you have very good knowledge in the coding, uh, if you are able to do some hacker at the hacker rank, uh, okay, if you are able to solve very logical questions, then only go to the software. Otherwise, um, um, there will be no good future. If you if you uh, think in terms of future, okay, so VLSA, uh, is also best opportunity for the core. I'm not telling only to go for VLSA. So whatever your you want to go just learn in depth advanced level okay so that will be helpful for the placements and for knowledge so if you are interested vlsa you can contact me or semi design in future okay so we are providing the courses on vlsa the front end design verification so myself i, I am providing uh, the entire course okay entire job oriented course digital logic design verilog hdl system verilog and the uh, uvm and scripting languages okay so the protocols and the projects are very important to get into the job okay so yeah you can learn all the things in the future okay so yeah do you have any doubts how is the no, ma are you are you able to um, know something new about vlsi yes ma okay 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 if you don't have any doubts we can close the session okay ma'am uh, if someone is having doubt i'll give them contact yeah. okay okay ma'am for some reason also so okay we can wind up now okay thank you so much ma'am for your time yeah okay thank In you really please thank you ma'am yeah thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone it's a great session with you and interaction thank you ma'am thank you thank you Yeah. Good night. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Good night. Good night.